one, and we are live. I'm Matt Orfala, and my guest today is Jim Pugh of the Universal Income Project. Thanks for having me, Matt. Thank you for joining me. And we've all heard uh, this in the news, Elon Musk in particular, talking about how because robots are getting smarter with AI, that they're coming to take our jobs. And that's why we need a universal basic income. Why we should all get money regardless of our employment. That's what Elon Musk saying, that is saying. That's what a lot of futurists are saying, technologists. But my guest, Jim, here today is going to tell us why we need a basic income even without the robots. Can you explain that for us, Jim? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I So I, like many people, first became sold on the idea of basic income from the automation perspective. The idea that, oh, look how fast tech's advancing. Oh my gosh, there's not going to be enough jobs to go around. Let's start thinking about big new solutions. And it's like, oh, basic income, that seems like an obvious one. But as I spent more and more time in the space, my perspective has actually shifted. I think that basic income is not just something that we need to be considering once most of the jobs are gone. It's something we should be talking about implementing right now. And the reason is that once you start, once you end up in that big idea space, and you look at how many issues we're already facing, this is something that, like, guaranteeing people's economic security, right now, the number of people who are in incredibly unstable and chaotic doing that sort of work is really, really high, and it's just going up. That's without any, like, major robotic advances, and we don't even have the arrival of self-driving cars yet. And so to support that more contingent, chaotic type of work, having the security that basic income provides and knowing that you'll be able to cover your basic living expenses is a game changer because right now people are like clutching on to whatever they can manage and aren't actually having the opportunity to think about, all right, well, is there something I could go and like do that maybe wouldn't give me money right away, but if I actually spent the time to do the training or the research or whatnot, I could have like both be making me more, way more money, but also contributing to society way more. Um, and I mean, as we talk about how basic income would allow us to pursue um, pursue unpaid work like caregiving without the fear of, of starvation. Like that's not something that's going to be different in a future with robots. That's true today. And so I think that really most of the benefits that we talk about with basic incomes, like those exist in the modern world. It's the question of can we actually summon the political will to make it happen? Yeah. I I mean, I think... I mean, there's just a huge opportunity here for any party to pick up this cause, I feel. I mean, it, whenever anybody, you know, understands what basic income is, how it works, how it's, you know, a better solution than our current welfare system. It's not something on top of the current welfare system. It, it's hard for... I, I can't... It's very hard for people to be against it once they really understand it. And because of that, because, you know, it's something that would benefit everybody and more and more people are, you know, struggling economically, like you said, it's, it's just, it's just an unbelievably attractive uh, common sense solution. So I think the political will uh, definitely is there, but people just need to know about it. And I know that's what you're doing at the universal uh, income project. Um, you want to tell us uh, about how you go, you're going about spreading the word. You told me that y you've had a couple, two interviews uh, earlier today with people from, from the Japan and Korea. I mean, that's pretty encouraging. T tell us what you're doing at Universal Income Project. Yeah, our focus has really been to drive more conversation with an emphasis on bringing in diverse perspectives. I think that one of the, one of the challenges is because you have folks like Elon Musk talking about automation, that's where everyone's head goes. It's like, oh, it's like automation, automation, automation. And that's all people think of. And I think a lot gets lost when that's the case. 
because you Google basic income, you see all this media looking at it from the tech perspective, and you don't realize what all these other benefits could be around it. Uh, you get caught on that trap, and then oftentimes people don't ever make it out. And yeah. so for us, it's been very important that we we try to push out those other perspectives, talking with racial justice groups about what this would do on that front, talking with people working in the art space about how this might actually create a lot more equity in who can be an artist and in supporting their work, talking with those in the social services space about what this would do around homelessness and uh, people who are coming out of the prison system and how it can support them getting back on their feet. These are all really important aspects of basic income. Um, and one thing that's that we've definitely seen is that it's a two-way conversation, that this isn't just about communicating to the broader world like, oh, this helps here. Our perspective over time on how to approach the policy has very much shifted as we've talked to these different groups because it's given us just a better understanding of what are the particular needs, what things basic income would and wouldn't solve. Because I think that's something that oftentimes um, those of us in the space like see how much value this has, but we ourselves may make the mistake of talking about it as a panacea, as something that solves everything as opposed to saying like, hey, this provides a backbone. This gets rid of poverty, which is the root cause of so many things, but there's other stuff on top of that. And as we've been able to better understand, oh, like here's here's how it makes a difference. Here's uh, areas where it doesn't necessarily be able to refine our perspective on, on what approach to policy will actually really guarantee that everyone is benefiting from it. Uh, you mentioned so many uh like groups that would be benefit that would benefit from this. Um, can you explain how uh, you know, like the women's movement and uh, racial justice movement would like really should adopt this as a main pillar of their cause? Yeah. So um, we've been working uh, with an organization called the Insight Center, uh, which is based uh, in Oakland, not, not too far from us. Um, and, and their focus is um, is racial justice from looking at it from an economic perspective. Um, something that they are particularly passionate about is uh, child trust accounts or baby bonds, because one of the big issues in the racial justice space is it's not just income security, it's the wealth gap. If you look at black families in America and white families in America and how much assets are there, white families on average have like a pretty substantial amount, it's in the tens of thousands of dollars. Black families, I think it's in the hundreds of dollars, if that. And so even beyond how much you're getting every month, how much you actually have in savings, like what enables you to actually like tackle some like bigger effort, that's really prohibitive. And so we've been talking to them and obviously there's many different proposals on how you exactly implement a basic income, but one thought uh, is that if you had some level of basic income going to children, some of that might go to the parents and some of it could actually go into some sort of account that they might access when they become an adult. And so that way you get the benefits of the economic security basic income, but as people are growing up, they also have that lump sum to start out their life with, and that may open up opportunities that wouldn't exist otherwise. And this is all stuff, obviously, that the more we can encourage pilots and experiments, the more we can actually get real evidence as to what things make a difference. But I think it's helpful to, to I mean, even, even as outside the box as basic income is as a concept, thinking outside the basic income box as to like what are the versions of that that actually are going to be the best fit for different communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, if all these, there's so many movements going on right now, women's rights, uh, social justice, you know, the libertarian movement. Um, I mean, huge. And in each, if each, if all of them came together uh, with this, with this one, um, you know, goal that would benefit everybody's cause. I mean, liber the libertarian argument, obviously, you know, reduce government, replace, you know, this over a hundred anti-poverty bureaucratic anti-poverty programs we have now with just one simple program, uh, more government transparency. Um, Women's rights, obviously, like you mentioned, um, 
you know, it's funny because, well, let's, let's just say like right now, equal pay is that that's one of the big um, pillars of the women's rights movement. Right. And well, basic income, that's equal pay for, for everybody. And right now, you know, as you know, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of home, a um, lot of caretakers and, that don't get paid. Um, but obviously their work is just as valuable as, you know, anyone else's, if not more value. I mean, it's a pretty important job, you know, the future of our generation. Um, man, yeah, if everybody just united, wow, what a powerful movement this could be. Um, and, and so you're having, I hear you're having a whole bunch of people together uh, to come to San Francisco for uh -huh. a basic income create a thong. Uh, I, I was there last year and had some fun. I know you're doing things a little differently this time. Um, I have to say, I recommend it for anybody, um, especially if you're in the San Francisco area. I mean, there's no excuse, you're right there. Tell, tell us about it, Jim. Yeah, the idea with both the original create a thong and this one is that we recognize that there's people out there who have some really ingenious ideas about how to talk about basic income and what we can be doing to better explore the space and particularly to better get the word out. And so the Create-A-Thon is encouraging folks to come together from all walks of life. So we want artists, we want writers, we want technologists, filmmakers, musicians, anyone who makes things in any sort of form to come to this event and to think about what ideas do you have to get the word out about basic income? And then the first evening is going to be a pitch session. So we'll have folks sharing their thoughts like, well, I think it would be great if we did this music video that explain this aspect of basic income to everyone um, or whatever you come up with. And then uh, have folks form into teams, collaborative teams that will actually work on those projects throughout the weekend. Um, we, the first one around, we kept it like very, very open-ended, like encourage people to like, do, do what you want. Um, this time we're going to work to provide a bit more guidance up front, um, trying to see like what, what actually has potential to like have a pretty big impact out there. We're bringing in some partner organizations that'll be able to work with folks, um, to help give them different perspectives and guidance on that front. Um, but the, the core ideas are the same. We want people to be bringing their creativity and their hard work to to make some exciting things happen. Yeah, um, I remember one of the projects was kind of just a um, compiling all the the responses to the typical arguments, mm -hmm. um, and just one that I I just uh, stayed with it was um, you know the argument that you know nobody you know hey that's that's you know that for one it's like that sounds like communism two it's like hold on you can't pay you can't pay people give people money if they don't work and then someone had this great point that like that um communist leader lenin <laughs> is one of his famous quotes is he who does not work neither shall eat so it's like i don't know so uh it's that in that sense it's not communist at all yeah, not uh, no <laughs> um let's see you got what? What else, Jim? You should anything else we should you want to touch on? Or you know, I'm pretty into this. You got any questions for me? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I will say one thing. I'll say is, um, and again, as I said, the perspective of us, the Universal Income Project, has shifted over time. But we, at this point, after having conversations, have definitely have reservations about the idea of fully eliminating the social safety net on basic income. That there's certainly policies that exist today that would be totally redundant if you're giving people enough money to get by. Like, why do you need food stamps if you're actually giving people the money to buy food? But there are programs that actually are like targeting specific things that cash itself might not be enough to fix. I mean, look at disability. That's something, there's a lot of people out there, like you can say a thousand a month, which for the average person in the average town in the US, all right, you're gonna be all right. But depending on your situation, a thousand bucks a month may be not anywhere near covering your costs. Um, so that's something that I would say I've gotten a little more cautious over time mm -hmm. about like how much I would feel comfortable just like taking an eraser or two from the get go. 
But again, I think that's where if we can be doing pilots and research projects to like actually try out these different approaches and see what happens. I mean, I think let's look at the data because I think that's where we're really going to be able to see like, all right, if we do this approach, like we're seeing people better off across the board. If we're doing this approach, well, all right, these people are doing better, but whoa, what's happening over here? And so really being able to, to get that perspective as to like what is, how, how do a tackle basic income in a way that, that lists everyone's vote? Yeah. I mean, personally, I'm for, you know, scrapping pretty much everything other than I think health, healthcare, I think a single payer healthcare is, you know, the most efficient way to go for healthcare. Um, so, so, so Jim, all these freaking, I mean, there's all these, uh, you know, reasons here that just seems pretty clear uh, that it's just a, a great solution, effective, efficient solution to poverty and many other problems. Why aren't the Democrats talking about it? Um, I think there's not a whole lot of public conversation yet, but I think, uh, I mean, behind the scenes, folks are, are definitely intrigued. Um, I think that very much there's a perspective of the devils and the details around it. Um, I mean, as as on the right as well, there's concerns about costs. Because like anytime you are talking about a program with a big price tag attached, um, that's something that, that people start to get pretty nervous around. Uh, I will say that I think across the board, people are more open to big ideas now than they were a few months ago. Um, but what would actually allow big things to happen is, is could be a different question. Um, but I think that a key thing is, I, I think it's great that you brought up single payer because oftentimes when I've talked to people on the left, um, they are intrigued and sometimes supportive of the basic income, but they get more excited when you talk about it as part of like a bigger progressive vision um so something where you do have like because like if you have basic income and like you haven't figured out your healthcare situation things like don't necessarily work super well um but if you're talking about like basic income plus single payer plus a way of ensuring that everyone's able to get access to education all right suddenly it's like i can see how like a future with with these policies is actually something mm -hmm. that uh yeah that seems to like really uh really cover cover the things that are important to me yeah i mean i i mean i live in washington dc it's probably you know the highest percentage democrat in the country i mean it's insane so so i i you know often in conversation i i get the same thing from people that they're really not that um enthusiastic yet about basic income. and a lot are still they're still very like they're like oh a single payer i don't think we can can we really pass it i don't know if we can really pass it oh sure sure oh it's a great idea oh yeah it would be better yeah but i don't know if we can pass it now that that kind of thinking that really needs to stop that needs to stop like I, here's i mean instead of playing defense I got this uh, text from Our Revolution. You familiar with this? Um, yeah. uh, how would you describe it? Um, it's basically like kind of a that's been off from the Bernie Sanders campaign, continuing to push push yeah. in policy ideas. Yeah, um, and they basically yeah they'll endorse progressive candidates. Um, and here's the thing: so I'll get these updates every so often. It's like c come join a rally for. Sing, to help defend single payer, or sorry, to help defend Obamacare. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> um, to help defend X, to help defend Y, to help defend Z. It's like, hold on, stop being on defense. Jesus Christ! Like those are the time. Those are not big goals. You need big goals. Trump said he was going to end the whole EPA. Say what you will about that. That's a big goal, and that gets people's attention. You know, like we gotta have big goals. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that that's that's something that certainly in the past has been really missed. That I, I mean, frankly, I think it is a combination of the two. Like, you need to have people who are sweating the small stuff. You need to have people who are like painting the vision. But we have very much erred way too far on the side of the former. 
up to this point. And so particularly now as we go forward, it's about like there's some crazy shit headed our way and we need to be ready to like stand up to that. But at the same time saying like, all right, this is where we're going. Yeah. And let's keep that in mind, have our North Star that can like motivate the fight as well. Yeah. Like <laughs> just like the the one side just like we're going all the way over there, you know, getting rid of government totally. Uh and, and it's just like in this one and then the Democrats are just like, we just want to stay right here. Like, yeah. you can get just totally overrun. You gotta be like, we're going a couple, this way. Folks, uh yeah, Bernie Sanders, yeah, Elizabeth Warren. Uh -huh. start electing more more fighters. Yes, yes. Uh yeah. But I mean, even Elizabeth Warren, I don't know. Uh, I guess I was let down how she didn't endorse Bernie. And, and also, I mean, she, she speaks great. She speaks great. But, I mean, what, in, in, remember, like, with this, the Wells Fargo fiasco, right? And she really, you know, um, put it to him, like, you know, um, told, told him how horrible he was, you know, his actions were, how despicable his actions were. But... No jail time. Like you gotta punish. You gotta really punish something like that. If I, I think if you know, if we're gonna see it in order to have a change in behavior, but so that so that's my little uh, um, issue with Elizabeth Warren. But yeah, it's true. She, unfortunately, she is still the, among the best um, that we got. Okay, uh, that was a good twenty minutes so far. Uh, <laughs> anything you'd like to say to wrap it up and and plug? Uh, Basically, the universal income project. <laughs> um, I mean, just to echo your point, like if you can make it out for the Create-A-Thon, we would love to have you. It's the weekend of March 24th. It'll be starting Friday night and going through Sunday. Um, it's going to be a great group of folks. We'll have some people there speaking about basic income, and you'll get to connect with other advocates. So it's going to be a really good time. Um, and then one of the other things that we do is uh, the basic income podcast. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, we've we've done uh, some interviews with some some of the top leaders in the space. Um, we talked to Andy Stern, talked to Scott Santons, uh, talked to uh, Roger Brayman. We did an interview with Aijin Pu, who runs the National Domestic Workers Alliance a couple weeks back. Um, incredible woman. She had some amazing thoughts on what basic income could, could mean for the domestic workspace. Um, so, uh, yeah, I encourage you to tune in for that. And... Um, if you have ideas or if you're interested in getting involved, like you can check us out on Facebook, Universal Income Project. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me, Jim. Yeah, glad to be here. Till next time. <laughs> Peace. And live broadcast.